Well, welcome back to 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse and all that goes with it. Um, eh, been a weird couple days with dogs and stuff and health problems, but I got some viewing in. Like this thing right here. The Wasp Woman and the Beast from Haunted Cave. Great stuff. Um, of course, I didn't see these when they theatrically came out. They were on, um, you know, I think it was the Channel 7 Big Show when I first saw them. Uh, the Wasp Woman was a Corman film. Um, I believe it was written by Leo Gordon and uh, starred Susan Cabot of uh, Machine Gun Kelly fame. And it's uh, about an aging um, fashion model, for lack of better words, cosmetologist whose face has been used so many times that, like, uh, she's aged. I mean, we get old. So she gets in touch with a mad scientist who has been doing something with uh, wasps and injects her with some wasp enzymes, which basically brings back her faded youth, but gives her an appetite for human flesh as she tears people apart. Off camera, of course. Uh, of course, one of the people she tears apart is Bruno Visoda, who was a really big guy, so of course we couldn't have that shown. But eventually she gets her comeuppance, as all these creatures do in horror movies. Well... The Beast from a Haunted Cave was produced by Gene Corman and shot back-to-back -back with, I think, Ski, ski Troop Attack in the Dakotas. Um, basically, I think this was, I'm pretty sure this was Monty Hellman's first film. And it's about uh, this gang of crooks that ingratiate themselves with a, a ski instructor guide. They want to go cross-country, but of course they're going to rob a vault of some gold bars before they do that. So to set up a distraction, one of the gang takes off with uh, the barmaid and he sets an explosive charge in this old gold mine, but he happens to see a cracked piece of an egg there. And after he sets the charge, all of a sudden these tendrils reach out and yank the girl out of his grip. He runs back and says he did set the bomb, but talks about this creature and this poor girl, Natalie. Of course, they don't buy it. So anyway... Uh, unfortunately, a watchman goes up there when the mine blows up and gets killed while the others rob the bank, and then they join the guide, Gill, to go cross-country skiing. Well, the creature's a little pissed off and is, is following them. And um, in one of the creepier scenes that really stuck with me when I was a kid, they're sleep. Actually, honestly, there was no sets in this. They were sleeping outside in the snow. I mean, they're, they're you know, it's Deadwood. So something wakes up the one guy who had the encounter with the creature, and he goes trudging through the snow with his flashlight to see this, you know, how trees have that double trunk, the, the V in them? Well, he sees this figure cocooned in the tree, and it's Natalie, and as he shines the flashlight on her, she opens her eyes, and it's really fucking creepy. So he takes a couple shots at the creature, runs off, and they want to know what was going on, and he wouldn't tell them. So eventually they get the gills, little... Um, hideaway in the mountains uh, that's uh, overseen by this uh, Indian uh, woman who helps him. Um, the creature is prowling around out there, and um, the one guy does find a cave. He tracks it to the cave. Well, things don't go well because uh, the main guy's girlfriend has now fallen for Gil the guide, and they decide that they, they already know that the robbery had taken place, and they know that he's going to turn them in, and they basically know that, you know, he knows that they're going to knock him off before they leave. So he takes off with uh, the girl Gypsy, and this thing attacks and drags uh, the older woman with him. And one of the gang is really pissed off and follows him out to the cave and sees her cocoon to the, si to the side of a wall with Natalie, who is being drained of blood by this big mosquito-like creature. Of course, he's knocked out and cocooned to the wall, and his blood is sucked, too. Well, there's a blizzard rolling up, and Gil and a Gypsy decide to hide in the cave, and they're followed by, of course, the other two. Oh, one who has found a couple of flare pistols. Well, they get in there, they're attacked by the creature, the, the, the big bad guy played by Frank Wolf is killed. The other guy, who's played by Richard Sinatra, a distant, distant cousin of Frank, discharges the two flare guns into the creature, setting it on fire, and another monster bites the dust in another 50s film. Honestly, there's some really creepy elements to this film, even you know, though it's low budget. And uh, that DVD I just showed you was out from Retro Media, and they actually had um, 
oh, I remember what the guy's name was. Uh, Michael Forrest. He was still alive. I hope he's still alive. And um, he did the audio commentary on it. Uh, Frank Wolf did a couple more movies in the States, but quickly emigrated to Italy, where he became uh, a hot item there in regular films and spaghetti westerns. But unfortunately, uh, he suffered from depression and committed suicide uh, later on in life. Uh, the other film I watched was Stuart Gordon's From Beyond, the follow-up to The Reanimator that again starred Jeffrey Combs, um, Barbara Crampton, Ken Furry, and uh, only a couple other people. It's basically uh, a six-person shoot. They have this resonator that brings things in from beyond, including this creature who takes over um, Jeffrey Combs' mentor. I think, what's his name? Um, Crawford Tillingist or something. That's, that's his name in the thing. So this thing does all kinds of, it stimulates your pineal gland, in which the pineal gland pops out of Jeff's head after uh, some encounters with the creature. Uh, Barbara Crampton strips down to a leather uh, outfit with black stockings and stuff as there's something in her head. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff, nonstop gore, heads getting twisted off by this creature, a huge worm in the basement, Ken Furry running around half naked until he's eaten by a horde of flies. And eventually the house has to be blown up to get rid of the resonator and get rid of Dr. Pretorius, who was the guy who got sucked in, who became one with whatever this creature was. Um, this one actually got a theatrical release, as the reanimator really didn't. It, the reanimator made the rounds real quick as people bitched about the cat scene or something, I think. But this one's just as over the top and just as crazy, so um, yeah, definitely worth the look from beyond. Um, got something in the mail today. The new issue, oh my god, up number 62 of Shock Cinema Magazine. Unfortunately, after decades of staying at $5, they actually had to raise the price to $7, but it's still worth it. It's probably one of the most longestly enduring uh, magazines out there. And they did a couple uh, little reviews on Midnight Magazine, embracing horror, sci-fi, fantasy, and all of its pop culture forms. Films, TV, books, and comics, this massive 92-page issue from editor Eric Wright includes interviews with director Tim Ritter, Truth or Dare, SFX artist Tracy Jane, articles on the Carnosaur Trilogy, Riku Browning, and crappy Frankenstein films, plus a smattering of reviews. Okay, Grindhouse Resurrection, number one. Pete Chiarella, a.k.a. 42nd Street Pete, returns with a new mag overflowing with all the info, opinions, and attitude that we've enjoyed for decades. Decades. Um, this 68-page premiere issue contains an enjoyable mix of exploitation movies, wrestling, grindhouse memories, reviews, sleazy paperbacks, early monster mags, obits, plus Stephen Bissett recalls seeing Eaten Alive. And you can get this at Mr. 42nd Street Pete at yahoo.com if you just want to send 14 bucks out to my PayPal. That's what it is. So, yeah, always cool to get the new Shock Cinema in the mail, and it's a shame you had to raise the prices, but, you know, what the fuck can you do in today's economy because we're all starving. But speaking of Midnight Magazine, they put out a lot of other stuff. This is Strange World number three which has a lot of crazy stuff in it. It's a 92-page little digest, and of course, yours truly has an article about the film The Corrupt Ones in it. And you can get this uh, from Midnight Magazine at Big Cartel, um, or, you know, actually, that's the only place you get it, Midnight Magazine at Big Cartel. So definitely worth the look. Um, it's a little bit on the adult uh, adults-only side, but hey, we like shit like that, right? So, uh, yeah, it's all cool. So, um, I don't know, I got a couple things pending, I don't want to say anything yet because I'm trying to get some ducks in a row as opposed to uh, trying to publish some stuff where I can actually get it in the hands of my overseas fans without them paying an arm and a leg for it. But it's like pulling teeth because I'm not a tech guy, I'm trying to figure this out, it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon and I've been trying to figure this out since 6 o'clock in the morning, so I'm not a tech guy. And also, if any of my fans live in a state where this shit is actually fucking legal, Please PM me, email me, whatever. I need some fucking weed. It's crazy out here. This this is the most draconian state. It's never going to fucking change because if we get the same Mr. Peeper's governor in again, we're never going to have legal weed. So please, anybody out there that can help, I'll pay. I don't give a fuck. So until next time, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and we'll catch you on the flip side.